What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Ari here and today we're going to be talking about which store is the best type of store to start. Now one of the biggest questions I've been getting asked lately is Ari, what do you think about one product stores? Ari, are general stores dead? What type of store should I start? And that's exactly what gave me the inspiration to create this video. Now today we're going to be covering a bunch of different store examples that I found for you. We're going to be looking at the traffic of these stores and we're going to be really diving deep into which type of store you should pick and why. So this is going to be a really fun and insightful video for you. So we're going to hop into my computer here real quick. But before I do that, if you get any sort of value, if you enjoy this video, make sure that you give it a fat thumbs up. That makes the video do a lot better, which makes me happier and makes me more motivated to create content, even though I'm already motivated enough to create content for you guys. And yeah, hopefully you learn a lot from this video. Let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome to my computer. Now we're gonna hop right into it. I have a Google Doc document, Google Doc document <laughs> here ready for you. And I did blur out a little bit of it just so that, you know, we make this cohesive and so that you don't skip around because it's really important for you to actually watch the whole video. So you hear all the things that I have to say because I have a lot to say, okay? But anyways, guys, what is the best way to start a store? That's the question at hand right now. Uh, and here are basically the four most popular store types that I've seen created in the past few years. The first one is, of course, general stores. Everybody talks about general stores. That's basically a store where you just have any sort of product. Uh, you're the Amazon, basically, of drop shipping. Now, the next one is niche stores. Think of, you know, big brands or, or just specific stores that only cover one type of product, like, you know, Kylie Cosmetics, for example. They only do makeup related stuff. Print on demand stores. You already know what a print on demand store t shirts, like print on demand stuff. Really, really cool. Uh, cool type of store a little bit higher barrier to entry because you need really cool designs but still really awesome and then of course one product stores one product stores are basically a store where you're it's all about one product you know you're gonna name your store basically according to that product as well and you're just gonna go all in on this one product now one product stores have been a lot more popular lately and that's what people have been asking me the most is what do I think about one product stores um, but I still wanted to just talk about all of these type of stores and not just single out one product stores in particular. Now before I show you all these stores that I've found and all these different things, I just really want to make a point that the harsh truth about all of these store methods is that there really is no best way. Now I do have a personal opinion on how I like to start my stores and how I teach my students to start their stores. But that being said, all of these ways work. In fact, there's people making money in every single one of these store categories. So it's just really important for you to understand that. Um, so that you stick to whatever it is that you're doing and not bouncing around from store type to store type. It's really important for you to really focus down, succeed at something, master it, and then start diving into other things and diversifying. So what I personally recommend, guys, as a niche store with an emphasis on one product at a time, and the reason why is because of versatility. In my opinion, guys, versatility is what equals longevity. When you're only focusing on one product alone, you may have longevity if you're able to really stand out in the market, of course, and just continue to pump out new ad creatives and shift around when the market shifts around. But of course, as you guys know, the markets change very quickly. Things happen that you don't expect and, and the internet world is moving very, very quickly at all times. So it's really important to be able to shift around. If you've ever seen the, the documentary by uh, of Steve Madden, if you don't know what Steve Madden is, they're basically a huge, huge billion dollar shoe company. They literally have a shoe making factory within their office. It's very small and they're able to just pump out new designs into their Soho store, which is in New York, um, where they get a lot of traffic, basically like actual people going to it and they pump out new shoes on there all the time and see how people react to them. And as soon as they find one that's really working, they push it out massively to all of their stores. And that's what I mean by versatility. You want to be able to really shift with the market and that's how you're going to really last for years and years and years because you can always keep things fresh. So let's just look at some store examples right now. Um, right now, the first store that I wanted to show you is Inspire Uplift. Most of you guys probably know about this store. This is basically a general store and they started drop shipping about five years ago or so. They've been around for a long time. Don't quote me on that. I just know that they've been around for a very long time and they used to drop ship. But now, of course, it seems like they have a lot of inventory in a warehouse or fulfillment center in the US. So they're able to really treat their customers and, and you know, get really good reviews and just a massive following. As you can see, guys, they're getting about 2.3 million visitors 
every single month. Now this is an estimate, but similar web, this is a Chrome extension by the way, and it's 100% free. Uh, so make sure you check it out. It's honestly really cool. But 2.3 million visitors a month. What that tells you is this store is definitely making over seven figures a month, guys. And this is a general store. So a lot of people say general stores are dead or general stores are you know not good. You shouldn't have a general store. Not true, guys. General stores still work significantly well. Now here's another general store. This is Daily Steals. Uh, uh, and as you can see, they're also kind of branded their general store. They literally sell all types of products, but they're doing it very, very well. Uh, they're not drop shipping either. I'm sure all of these stores started by drop shipping, but they eventually merged into just, you know, US fulfillment so that they can really please their customers. And that's why they've been able to last. Look at how consistent this traffic is. They're getting almost a million visits a month, every single month, like clockwork. It's insane. And this is what I mean when I say longevity. I'm sure this store has been around for years. And that's personally where I see the one product store method being a little bit inconvenient. Let me show you something. The drop shipping search term is in its all time high guys. And I'm sure some of you guys that have seen success have experienced people copying your stores. And when it comes to a one product store or any sort of store really, general store, niche store, whatever it is, as soon as a product that you have is starting to take off, you get at least 10 to 15 other stores copying your same description, copying your product, your pictures, your store, your videos, everything. And of course, this isn't gonna get any better, guys. People are extremely lazy and it's really unfortunate, but it's just the nature of drop shipping, right? We're taught almost to just copy other people, copy other people, copy what's working. And I do think that modeling success is a good idea, but it is detrimental for certain types of stores. And that's where I see the one product store really lacking. Now, general stores are kind of the complete opposite end, right? I do think general stores are great and can be versatile. Like I said, you can have a general store for years on end, but the thing about general stores are that, that they are very hard to pull off to this extent, you know? You need to consistently be testing new products. And of course, if you are always drop shipping, you may get a lot of issues regarding, you know, customer feedback, and stuff like that, which is growing in importance almost every single month, right? Facebook has rolled out updates, really, really focusing in on customer feedback ratings. So this is why you see the general stores that are succeeding are the ones that are actually treating their customers right, getting out fast shipping and and getting a real reputation. And that's where I do see a one product store and, uh, being beneficial because you can really just focus on that one product and get faster shipping and stuff like that and really get a good customer, uh, customer feedback rating. But like I said, it's not as versatile, so that's basically the con when it comes to that. Now here's a one product store that actually Gabriel, of course you probably know Gabriel, Gabriel St. Germain, really cool guy, we're real cool. If you're watching this, what up, bro? But anyways, <laughs> this store is really, really cool. Now, this is a really great example of a one product store, BlendJet. And they're at, see, this is what I mean. They're able to provide free two-day shipping on all orders and just really get the customer satisfaction ratings really high because they're able to just focus on this one product. But, okay, I'm trying to show you the amount of traffic that they get, but for some reason, my internet's like not loading right now. But I did look this up yesterday when I recorded it, and they're getting about 150,000 visitors per month. But like I said, they don't have the versatility that I would like because they only have one product. Like I said earlier, that has its advantages and disadvantages. So the type of store, like I said, that I like is a niche store with an emphasis on one product. So taking basically the best of all of these different store types and combining it into one. Now Trend Cove is a perfect example of this, guys. And this is basically how I like to start my stores. The name Trend Trend Cove does not imply anything in particular, which makes it really versatile, right? I can make Trend Cove a whatever type of store if I wanted to, but what I did is I found a cool product, uh, the pocket fishing rod, if you remember, and I decided to make the store an outdoor store, but I only focused on the fishing rod and then added like one or two more products that were just accessories for the outdoors that just made sense, and it made the store a massive success. But then what happened was, of course, two months later, since I revealed the whole store, everybody was copying it, so the product started to die down a little bit. People were starting to copy absolutely everything about the store, and I decided it wasn't worth it to continue to run it, but I did test other products, and they did succeed within that store. Now, that's kind of my point there. As soon as your one product starts dying down, you can focus on reviving it while you start testing new products, so then you get sort of that general store benefit and versatility, so your store can continue to thrive, and you could potentially make it a big time brand. Gymshark is a great example of this, guys. They started by selling like supplements and different shirts and look at where they're at now. They're getting about 
3.6 million visitors per month, guys. They are clearing an insane amount of revenue, and they've basically grown to be one of the biggest Shopify stores of all time right now. As you can see, they are seventh in the top charts. And by the way, this is how I found all these stores, is by going on myip.ms and then Shopify, on Google and then I found all these stores uh, and I put them on here just to show you some examples um, but as you can see they sell so many different types of products now right they have so that means they can shift in their market and continue to thrive and continue to push out new things and keep things fresh and that's basically what I like to do as well guys what I'm really into now is building a brand that's focused on one product right now but as I but as soon as I start getting more things in place I'm starting to test other products and, and just really building a huge movement around my brand right and I really like the idea of having a store like that because because you can continuously put in work every single day and it will continue con to grow right you'll continue to find new products uh, new exciting products new ways to market your existing products, new influencers to use, new people to get behind your brand, new ads to test, and you could have a store like this for years and years and years on end and become something like Inspire Uplift or potentially something like Gymshark. Gymshark did dropship their supplements at the very beginning. And I actually listened to an interview by, by the CEO and he said that if it wasn't for dropshipping at the very beginning, they probably wouldn't be where they are today. So keep that in mind, guys. You can use the dropshipping business model to and focus on one product to really get some cash flow going, some data, and really get a good idea for what you want your store to be, and then eventually start testing other products and continue to build it to a point where you can actually brand it and become a multi-million dollar brand. That should be your goal because that's very, very sustainable. So guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I know it got a little bit long. I didn't mean for it to be that long, but this is the second time recording it, so I thought of new things to say uh, that maybe I didn't cover yesterday. Now, I just wanna restate that I don't believe any of these these ways are bad ways to start a store. They all have their pros and cons, and at the end of the day, you should do whatever you feel is best for you. I like my method of doing things, but you may not like the way that I do things, so do whatever it is that you want to do. Just make sure that whatever it is you're doing, that you stick to it for at least a year, for a long period of time, so that you so that you can actually master it and find success. You're not gonna find success if you don't stick to something for long enough. If you keep shifting from one store to the next, you're never gonna get any sort of massive breakthrough. You have to stick to something that you can continue to work on every single day and make small efforts every day that will over time compound tremendously. And that's exactly what I covered in my previous video, so make sure you go watch that if you haven't yet. But like I said, guys, that's it for this video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.